All right, welcome back. Great job in getting to this point. You have really gained some valuable skills and you're learning how to use UI table views very well. All right, now what I wanna do in this video is I wanna show you how we can integrate this open close thing, okay? I went ahead and I added in the code and compiled it and it's right here. I'm obviously going to recompile it right now though and it's not gonna be there and we'll add that in in this video, okay? So let me show you what your app should look like at this point. All right, so it should look something like what you see here on the screen, exactly the same really, except for without that closing and opening functionality. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how we can do that. And it's actually really easy. It's just a little bit hard to understand at first. And it's really good that you're watching a video on it because it's something that you would have a really hard time uh, understanding without watching a tutorial on it, okay? So let me show you how to do that. First thing we need to do is make this close button actually have a button, right? We actually need to make it do something when we click it. So let's go to our header, view for header in section, and let's just say button dot add target, and we'll say self, and then the action will be selector self dot open section. And then the control event is gonna be dot touch up inside. And then we're gonna have to create this method down here by saying at objective C, function, we'll say file private function, and then we'll say open section. Let's go ahead and have it take in the button as a parameter because that's how it works with add target. It's gonna allow us to get that button via parameter. So we'll say button, we'll say UI button. And then what I want you to do is just print out the button tag, okay? And then that's just gonna be button.tag. And then we can set this value by going into our view for header and section and saying button.tag is equal to section, okay? Now the reason we are doing this is because we need to keep track of which section we want to basically open and close. And if we're gonna be doing the logic for that in open section, then we're clearly gonna be messing with our section data up here, right? We're gonna either be messing with the zeroth element the first element or the second element, okay? So the, the, these three elements, array start at zero, you probably know that by now, but zeroth, first, and second, okay? Or one, two, three, right? So this tag in the first button will be zero, the second one will be one, and the third one will be two, okay? So notice in the console there, it's printing one, two. So I'll click it again, zero, one, and two, all right? So basically we have access to this button tag and we can now get access to the correct data based on that tag. And based on that, we can open or close it. We can switch this open to either true or false, which then can signal to the UI table view how many sections we need to kind of return, right? Instead of returning that many. So let's go ahead and let's say in our number of rows and section, if, and then we'll say, okay, so we'll say if, sections at section dot open, we'll say if not, so if it's not open, then we're gonna return zero because we don't want to return anything, okay? So let's go ahead and with that in mind, let's go up here and let's just switch the second one to false, okay? So the one with one in it. And you're gonna see that it doesn't appear. You're gonna see the header, but you're gonna see that this one does not appear because we're returning zero. So it doesn't go over it when it gets cell to row at. See, it just says close. It's not there, okay? If you were to do that to these, these would disappear. Obviously these are true, so these are appearing, however. So with that in mind, let's switch it back to true. And then let's make it so that we can switch these variables. Let's switch this open variable to true or false whenever we click on one of the headers, okay? So let's go ahead and do that by saying let section is equal to button.tag. And then let's say let open is equal to sections at section.open. Well, let's do this. Let's say let is open is equal to sections.section at open. So we're gonna say, okay, is this section open? So is this section open or closed? So opened or closed. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, well, either way, let's go ahead and get into our sections data and let's get the correct one by passing in the section. So whatever header we clicked on is gonna give us the correct section. And then let's switch the open value to the opposite of what it is, okay? So if it's open, 
based on this value, we're just going to switch this. Okay, so we're just overwriting it. We're really just switching it. You could also write this as this. You could just say that, right? You could say sections at section dot open is equal to the same thing, but reversed, not open. So we're just flipping it. All we are doing here is flipping the true or false value to the opposite value. Okay, we're just flipping it from true or false. So if we click on the second section, remember it prints out, let's click one of these. It prints out two, right? So I print the last one, say, okay. So it says, okay, well, sections at two is gonna be this section. So let's go ahead and say sections at two dot open and let's switch it to sections. Let's switch it to false basically. So it just switches it. So let's go ahead and print sections at section dot open. And what I'm gonna do is print it there. And then I'm also gonna print it right above before we change it, because that'll show you that it switches because obviously we're printing the same exact value here, right? But if we print it right after we change it, then you can very clearly see that it is gonna switch, okay? So let's go ahead and let's go into our application here and do that right now. I'm gonna hit close. You'll see it says true and then false, okay? And then if you click it again, it says false and then true. So it switches back. So we are now switching the data correctly. And we now just basically need to return the correct amount of cells based on that value. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's look at our code here. Okay. So hmm, that's working except for you'll see it doesn't really do anything. And that's because we're not changing. We're not basically telling our table view that anything has changed. So it's not going to just know it's not going to run automatically and no. So let's go ahead and say table view dot reload data. And this is the wrong way to do it. I'm just showing you a couple ways that you might've tried in the past, or I'm showing you basically multiple ways of how to do it, right? And we're gonna do it a different way using delete rows and insert rows, but I wanna show you how to do this right now, just to show you that it's wrong, okay? And to show you that it works and to just explain it, right? You'll see they kind of disappear and that works great, except for it doesn't really look very good, okay? So if you want this effect, this is a completely fine approach. It just doesn't look very good, okay? Which is where delete rows and insert rows actually comes in handy, okay? Now, before we get into delete rows and insert rows, I wanna switch the title from close to open based on this value. So what we need to do is we need to say button dot set title. And then if it's open, we'll just say close. If it's not, we'll say, sorry, if it's open, we'll say open. Hmm, here, here's what I want to say. If it's, if sections at section dot open based on that, if it's true, then we'll have it be open. If it's not, we'll have it be false. Okay. So since we're using this variable so much and let's change this to dot normal. And since we're using that a couple times, what we should really do is put it back in a variable. So let's take this and let's say, let is open is equal to sections at section dot open. And then we'll say not is open here. And then we can also use it here. We can say is open. Okay. And all this is, is a ternary expression. It's literally just a condensed if statement. It's saying, okay, if it's open and this needs to be a question mark, if it's open, then return this else return this. So you can think of this as if, and then this is the first condition and then else is the colon and it's returning false if it's not open, okay? Or we, we should say close, my bad. All right, so that's good. Now let's go ahead and reload our application and let's see if this is indeed working. And it really will be, but I want to go slowly so you can understand it easier if I'm explaining it too fast. Things are really hard to understand if you don't understand them already. All right, so let's hit close and you'll see it doesn't switch. So I guess I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> Just kidding, but basically what we need to do is we need this to work. So hmm, I'm trying to think of why this isn't working. Button dot set title is open. Maybe we should do it inside of our actual title here, right? Well, here's the deal. I'm gonna recompile it and if it doesn't work, we won't worry about it for now, but just know that that's something we have to do and we're just gonna continue on to table view delete rows and insert rows. Yeah, okay, so let's not worry about it right now but let's switch over to, okay, I know why it's doing that. It's because we're reloading the data and then we're resetting it here, right? So what we should do is we should put the set title after reload data. And the thing is, it doesn't, this isn't gonna matter. Like I, I didn't even have to bring this up if I did it the other way first, the delete rows and insert rows. 
So this is probably a good thing that I'm I'm explaining it this way because now you can kind of just understand it a bit better. So let me comment out reload data and just hit re return. And it should switch the button. But again, since we're not reloading it, it's not going to basically close and open it. Okay, you'll see now it's like switching back and forth like it should, except for now our data is not reloading. So that's another flaw with reload data is that it kind of overwrites our button, but we could just put this expression inside of our button and do it there and it'd work fine. But either way, we have to change it, so let's not worry about it. So instead of reload data, what we need to do is we need to say, okay, if is open, let's go ahead and let's delete some rows. Let's say table view dot delete rows at index paths. It takes an array of index paths. So we have to say index paths with fade, okay? Now we don't have this, so we need to declare it up here. Let's say var index paths is equal to an empty array of index path, okay? So it's just gonna be an empty array of index paths. Now if we run this code, nothing's gonna happen because we don't really have anything in here. So we kinda need to loop through our data or these right here and basically add the index section and row, okay? So we already have the section because we're getting the data somehow. Now we just need to get the indices of the data array so that we can create it into an array of index paths. Now that probably doesn't make much sense. This was something that took me a second to understand even. So just hang tight and we're gonna understand it in a second. So let's gather these index paths by doing this. Let's say for row in sections at section dot data dot indices, okay? So the indices that are valid for the subscripting collection in ascending order. Let's go ahead and print row, okay? And you're gonna see what happens. It's basically gonna print, for the first one, it's gonna print zero, one. For the second one, it's just gonna print zero. And for this one, it's gonna print zero, one. Okay, so let me show you. And that has nothing to do with our image names, if that was confusing. All right, so I'm gonna hit close. Okay, and we get an error. Okay, so let's go ahead and read the error. I didn't expect that, but we'll see. So uncaught exception, invalid number of rows. Okay, so the reason it did that is because we're trying to delete rows here, except for we don't really have any index paths in there, so it's crashing. So just comment out line 104 and recompile your app, and then you'll see in a second now when we click it, it's gonna work just fine. Uh, that was just running because we're trying to delete empty index paths. Okay, so let's hit close. You'll see zero, 01. The second one should just say zero. Okay, and then this last one should say zero, 01 again. Okay, perfect. So you can see that on that last one I clicked it, it said two and then it said zero, 01. So really, we just need to delete the rows at index path section two, row zero, and section two, row one, right? Because section two is at the bottom. Oops, I'm gonna go to the bottom here. Section two is at the bottom. We wanna delete the zeroth element and the first element in index paths. So let's go ahead and add those in by saying, instead of print row, what we'll do is we'll say index paths dot append. And then for the new element, we'll just say index path, a new instance of index path. And we'll create it out. We'll say index path to delete. And then we'll say let index path to delete is equal to an index path instance. And this index path is gonna have the row section initializer. And the row is gonna be row, and the section is gonna be section, okay? And then we'll put that in there, so index path to delete. And then now what we can do is run the code and it's gonna delete them just fine. So let's recompile our application, and you'll see here in just a second that when we hit that close button, it deletes them out in a nice little animation, okay? So close animates them out, close, animates them out, and close, animates them out. Now there's a couple problems here. If we try and hit open, it's gonna crash, I think. And yeah, it'll crash because we're gonna try and delete rows that are already deleted. And it didn't animate them out entirely the way we want, but it animated them half the way we want. We want it to animate like that. It's just that now we wanna add the animations to the image view, okay? So let's go ahead and hit open. And okay, I thought it would crash, but Okay, if it crashes when you hit close again, basically. Okay, but basically either way, it's freaking crashing and we wanna fix that. All right, so we can do that by inserting the rows again when we get to here. So else, if it's not open, then we'll say table view dot insert rows and we're just gonna insert the same rows again and say dot fade. 
So now when we compile our application, I think I've said that a million times, compile our application. <laughs> Either way, if we compile our application here and we hit the open again, it's going to insert those rows back in again. So we hit close, we hit open, it inserts them. Okay, so we've successfully learned how to insert and delete rows from our application. And now all we really need to do is get the image view to animate properly when it opens up. Okay, so I'll show you what that looks like by closing the app and opening up my completed app and opening that up. Okay, close, open. Okay, so really all we have to do now is learn how to animate auto layout constraints and that will be the next video, okay? That'll be the last video right now, all right? I'll see you all in just a moment.